In this modern world where everything plays out fast and it plays out in the open at incredible speeds, and just when it seems like we're all in on it and interconnected, there are still a few communities that are not part of it. They're closed off by choice, and that would include the sizable population, especially here in New York, of Hasidic Jews, a branch of Judaism that has chosen to devote their lives to observance. Tonight, Dr. Nancy Snyderman introduces us to four young people who made the heart-wrenching choice to leave the fold, and now they're able to give us a glimpse inside that world. This wedding might look like it's in another country, but it's happening in Brooklyn, New York. The bride's face is completely covered. The groom is not beaming, but instead, deep in prayer. The couple met just a few weeks before this day because their marriage is arranged. Avraham Berkowitz is a rabbi and among the guests. They barely know each other, it's true. I met my wife for seven days. We don't marry the one we love, but we love the one we marry. This is a rare look inside the community of Hasidic Jews, whose members strive for total devotion to the Talmud or ancient Jewish laws. How would an American family understand our values? It would be similar to the cultural American values that were in the 1950s. At the reception, there is total segregation of the sexes. Women stay on one side of the room, men on the other. The groom doesn't dance with his bride, just other males. To understand what it means to be Hasidic, consider many in this neighborhood have never seen a movie or watched TV. Yiddish, not English, is the main language. In accordance to biblical teachings, men dress alike, wearing long curls, while married women cover their hair, usually with wigs. Family is paramount and others might appreciate the community's values. The modesty in the dress, the language in the house, standing up for parents, not interrupting when adults are speaking. That kind of protected lifestyle, that is what we have today. Remarkably, New York City's Hasidic community is located right across the river from Manhattan skyscrapers in one of the hippest areas in the country, Brooklyn. Here in Williamsburg, there are trendy shops, galleries, and a lot of bars. Yet just a few blocks away, more than 300,000 Hasidic followers have found a way to remain completely isolated, creating a religious island. Yet what happens when someone just wants to know what's on the other side? These four young people made the difficult choice to walk away from the community where they were born and raised. There's no wall around you. There are subways. What keeps people from sort of crossing that line? Gentiles will kill you. Gentiles will kill you. What they do is they don't make you think this is good, but it's forbidden. It's why would you even want that? What were you taught about the Holocaust? Ultimately, the lesson of the Holocaust is stay as insulated and as isolated yeah. as possible. So that's really the, the lesson that you grow up with. They say to people like us, you want to go mingle yeah. with them. Look, look, look what right. could yes. happen. Ari Mandel, Melissa Weiss, Sam Katz, and Hindi Sable all had something in common since they were children, curiosity. When words were blacked out in their school textbooks, they wanted to know what they meant. Do you remember words that you were not supposed to know? Many words. Um, some are pretty mundane, like dinosaur and universe and gymnasium. And what is it about those words that makes them forbidden? They bring up subjects they don't want to talk about. Subjects like evolution and astronomy are not taught in their private Hasidic schools. You mentioned gymnasium, which I don't, I don't get that. No. Why would we need to use the word gymnasium? To exercise. We, <laughs> we don't have that concept, To really. play. Like, exercise helps the body. It's a waste of valuable, time, precious it's time. time. It's great. Yeah. It's secular. Like most Hasidic boys, Sam Katz's secular education stopped at the age of 13. He then studied the Talmud, six days a week, up to 13 hours a day. But Sam had a burning desire for something more. One day, he sneaked away to a forbidden place in Manhattan. What did you think? Um, it, it was obviously a, a lot to process. He went 
to the Museum of Natural History. It changed his life. The first time I saw the dinosaurs, I barely knew what to make of it. And I was like, you know, I wonder how can this be assembled? There was something so connected about standing next to a dinosaur, something so um, universally harmonious, for lack of a better word. It was just a feeling of, 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 of this fantasy world. How do you explain censorship of books in words like dinosaur, gymnasium? It's an interesting question. Every single parent has to choose what to bring into the house and what not to. They don't believe that it's necessary to bring in a lot of doubts or questions on their faith and tradition. But when someone wants answers and they're looking to leave the community, they often come here. What most of the individuals that are coming to us, what we're seeing is they just want to learn. They want to study physics and they want to study how atoms work and they want to study math. Lonnie Santo runs Footsteps, a support group for Hasidics that helps teach some basics of life. Footsteps members are very much like immigrants, but they're immigrants into a country that they're citizens in. Some people don't know how to order in a restaurant. Or even how to kiss. How do you first kiss someone at 21? The first kiss. It, most people don't get that. Sexuality is just not discussed. In fact, young men and women are not supposed to socialize with each other unless they are family members. It's a normal part of adolescence to have sexual yearnings and wonder about the other sex. How did you guys deal? I mean, in my case, I was completely ignorant, so it, it didn't, I, I didn't know what that meant. And when you say you're ignorant, what do you mean? Sex and sexuality doesn't exist. There's no, you don't get sex ed, you don't get biology classes, you're not taught the birds and the bees, like, nobody knows anything. The word pregnant, like, my friend would never say it in front of a boy. But pregnancy is most certainly a fact of life. It's common for Hasidic couples to have 10, 12, or more children. After high school, most young women get married and start a family, which is why Hindi Sable's parents were disappointed she first wanted to go to college. I don't want to hurt my parents. If anything, I want to make them proud. And it's very hard knowing that I won't. Today, Hindi, age 28, is working on getting her MBA. And the others are also following their dreams. Melissa is pursuing acting. Ari joined the U.S. Army. And now at 30 is getting a bachelor's degree. Sam graduated college with a biochemistry degree. And the boy who just wanted to learn recently received a Fulbright scholarship to study in Berlin. Rabbi Berkowitz says very few ever leave the fold and says those who do don't realize what they have lost. Stop crying about what you didn't have. Your families did give you something beautiful. They brought you into beautiful homes, loving parents. That nucleus, what they gave you, the secular world would have loved to have. Sam says he realizes few in the community will ever see this report, but he hopes this message somehow gets inside. I want every a city boy and girl to know. I'm not saying you should live that outside life. It might make you happy, but you could. And know that option. If you think you might not be happy, know you could be happy yeah. out there. Dr. Nancy Snyderman reporting from Brooklyn, New York.